Hi. Today uh, we plan on making rustic baguettes. And when I say rustic, it's going to be is where you have a traditional baguette, which would be flour, water, salt, yeast, or if you do it with a pre ferment of poulish uh, in general. Uh, this is going to add one more complexity to it, actually two, uh, where this is going to have not only a poulish, but it's also going to have a levant. And then just to make it a little bit more uh, deeper flavor than you would normally, I put 3% whole wheat flour in there as well. Now with the whole wheat flour or any other additional flour flavor you can do, uh, you can do one, two, three percent, depending on the, the strength of it, uh, like corn flour, or if, if so, even when you do something like that, or even this whole wheat, it's, it's relatively cool to uh, take it and give it a little bit of a roasting. So you can put it in a sheet pan, put it in the oven, very, very specifically watch it, kind of flip it around a little bit. It'll only take probably 30 seconds or something. But if you do that, you can add even a, a deeper flavor. Today, I'm just going to go with just the 3% whole wheat, 97% white flour. Then I've got a white liquid levain and a uh, white poulish, okay? Uh, and then, of course, salt. A little pinch of yeast still, even though it's going to be leavened uh, much with the, the pre-ferments. <clears throat> but it's also going to be uh, at, uh, let's see, 0.2% on commercial yeast. All right, so... Here, I first want to show what the Levan and the Poulish look like and uh, show you when they're at full uh, strength and when you want to use them. So, right, so what we have on the left is the Poulish, and you can see this almost, it goes between double and triple its, uh, its height and volume uh, after you first mix it. And when it comes to full uh, uh, maturation, it's going to come up and then just start to slightly recede, and you can see where it's slowly coming down here. And you can, you have about maybe a two hour window from when that's very, very good to when it's gonna to start to uh, kind of lose its, its uh, strength. And then on the uh, Levan, which is our white liquid Levan on the right side here, uh, it's very similar. This will continue to ferment. You've got a longer window to use, uh, several hours, two, four, even six hours, depending on the temperature of the room and such. So when you have the two and you combine the two together, you're gonna to get that wonderful extensibility that you get with the Poulish, and then you get the, uh, that kind of strengthening and then also that chew with the Levan. We're only gonna go with a small percentage of the Levan with the majority of the percentage coming from the Poulish for the reason that, again, you're looking for a light and airy baguette, but to give it that, that little bit more of a country or rustic flavor to it, with the Levan, with the Chew, with the strength, you'll still get that wonderful cell structure, but you're gonna get that, that, uh, that deeper flavor. All right, so let's, uh, let's get back and we're gonna start scaling this off and uh, mixing. Okay, so with the Poolish, uh, the best way to go about kind of removing this from the container, take your water, kind of run it around the edge is the best, and it'll loosen it up enough to just kind of slide out, all right? All right, you get the majority of that out right in the beginning. All right, now I need to scale off 209 grams of the liquid Levan, okay? So that's coming in at about 14% when I do that. So it's just adding that, that touch of Levan. And then uh, all we're going to need now is dries as well as uh, you know, salt and yeast. All right, a little bit of the remaining water as well, of course. Now this, as all doughs that I've mixed so far in these videos, it's going to be a slow mix. And this still doesn't have any uh, enrichment, so there's no additional fats. So the best way to go about this, especially on a KitchenAid mixer, 
mix it at a long, slow speed. With the bulk fermentation, do some folds to build up the strength. The mixer itself will not develop the dough in the way that uh, doesn't damage, right? So the best way to use is much more of your hands after you get the incorporation stage, which is during the first six, seven minutes. So it's gonna mix, oops, again, about six, seven minutes. I'm gonna come back looking for a target temperature uh, of about 75 to 77 degrees, and, and then we'll see. All right, so we got about six and a half minutes or so. It looks like this is developing pretty well. I didn't really want to go any further. And the one concern that I always have mixing on these KitchenAids is the uh, uh, friction. So the dough temperature can get too high if I mix it for too long. So again, we're looking for between 75, 77 degrees. And again, yeah, that's, so I'm at 78 degrees, a little bit higher than I you know, would normally be projecting. But uh, it's not an issue, it's not out of control. But again, that, that friction and that uh, continuing of uh, uh, you know, development is not necessary. And so with this dough, we're gonna bulk ferment for approximately an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes, okay? And again, depending on your dough temperature. This is not necessary to fold, but I'm just gonna kind of put it in a position that it's uh, together better. And what we're gonna do with this, I'm more than likely going to fold this at about 45 minutes, okay? So let it bulk ferment, come back, check it again. Again, each and every time you mix a dough and when you do it more consistently, you'll know what to expect. But you have to get a feel for what the dough is gonna do and what you're expecting it uh, to happen in the, you know, the next hour to two. So each and every time you do this, pay attention whether you need a fold or you don't need a fold, uh, or if you need to hurry up on the timing and such. Okay, so going in at about 45 minutes, the dough is coming along very nicely. Uh, it's gonna be, let's say about an hour and a half total. But what I want to do is give a fold because it's not coming out of the mixer uh, enough to be that way. So all right. So again, just a nice long stretch all four directions. Okay, looks very nice. So given both the fold, the length of the fermentation, uh, the acidity, everything, these are the things that helps to build up the overall strength. So a very nice dough. Come back in about another 45 minutes and divide. Thanks. Okay, so we've got uh, an hour and actually about 45 minutes this time around and the dough looking very voluminous, very, very nice. Uh, looking forward to the way this turns out. So we're gonna divide this and uh, pre-shape as you would for baguettes. Uh, and it's, it's essential on, on how you do this. The care and the steps taken when making baguettes uh, there's a reason they use this to, to judge the quality of uh, competition in bakeries and such. So technique is everything in this. Okay, so now as you see this very, very lively dough that uh, we're gonna handle with care. And 
We're going to divide at uh, 280 grams. Uh, it's approximately uh, 10 ounces. The oven, when you're baking at home, uh, the most, most ovens are being basically the same for each. Uh, there's only 15 inches deep, so I can't make a full baguette. Okay, you can't load a baguette sideways in an oven, so don't even try. The length of this is going to be about probably 12, 13 inches. So I've reduced the weight that you would normally scale a full-size baguette to, like I said, 280 grams, which is uh, approximately 10, uh, 10 ounces. All right. Try to cut little rectangles, little uh, uh, squares that don't have too many uh, pieces added to it. All right, so. All right. Cut the long strip. Try to cut again, approximate to the size. And don't cut directly on the scale so you don't uh, damage the scale itself. Okay, so when pre-shaping, that's why you need to get kind of the rectangle, square. We're just gonna give a light little fold over to make a log, okay? And we're doing so with, you know, a very gentle touch. All that gas retention that's happening during the first fermentation, we wanna retain it, and then we'll deal with it later after uh, we're shaping. So again, it's just a very gentle thing. Now, if your dough is very loose, you can pre-shape a little bit more aggressively to build up additional strength, okay? But this dough has approximately 67% hydration. Between the mixing and the folding, that's all been uh, coming along nicely, so that's not something I need to worry about. We're gonna let these relax for about 20 minutes and then come back. Okay, so we're gonna shape. Uh, these have had a chance about 20 minutes to relax. Again, it's, it's very, it, it, the steps in the process to get to making a, a, you know, a very good baguette is giving it the time, the attention, the detail as you're doing it. It's not hard, it's just kind of follow the process, go along with it, gentle hands all the way through. And as we shape this, okay, you're just gonna, again, kind of release it from the table. These are a little bit smaller, obviously, so these would be more like demi baguettes, but we're just gonna kind of fold over and I'm gonna press in with my thumbs more than anything, okay? And just give it a light little fold and then, okay, seal it, all right? Now, you wanna release it from the table before you start to shape. So if my seam is here and I'm going down, when you shape, it's again, it's gonna be an even pressure from all fingers as you do this. And what I've found when you train a lot of people doing this, a lot of people like to stand to one side or stand to the other side, it tends to get a little bit more tapered this side, a little fatter this side. Try to keep with even pressure, giving that pressure all the way down to the baguette, okay? so. I'm gonna taper these a little bit more than uh, I would for like say a traditional baguette uh, for the more rustic look. This is also gonna be floured on the couche with the seam up so that we can have you know, a nice coating of flour on the top of the baguette as well. All right, so again, just the seam up, do that. All right, same thing again, just a gentle fold over, okay. Press in with your thumbs, give it a little bit. Release, release it from the table. Now you can actually roll it through a little bit of flour if need be. Not too much because you'll just basically start sliding it. Okay, and then Going with the taper. Find your seam, OK? 
Okay, that's what's important. Make sure that you have enough room to be able to do this. So, all right. A few more baguettes, flour on the bottom, seam up. All right, so we've had uh, final proof at about two hours, maybe two hours, 10 minutes or so. And what we're gonna do when we load up the baguettes is uh, cut a couple baguettes, and then I'm also gonna cut, cut a couple epi. Uh, so you do a little bit thing where it's, it basically kind of creates a baguette into some rolls. All right, so again, with transfer peel, now if you remember, these were proofed seam side up. Okay, so we're gonna roll these over. Have like so. So, just in general, for cutting baguettes, uh, this size in particular, it's just going to be three scores. Four would be a little bit too much. You need to get kind of an even length. You score overlapping by about a quarter to a third each, bag, uh, each score and keep it within the shoulder itself. Okay, so in other words, the shoulder being the sides there. So it has to be overlapping like so. Okay, for epi, what we're going to do is take scissors, which I'll show you on this baguette in particular, how to do. So if I'm going to score a baguette, again, just it's going to be three, very sharp blade, maybe eighth of an inch uh, to even a sixteenth of an inch deep at an angle, okay? And I have them overlapping by, I said, about a third. All right. Now for an epi, what you're going to have is this. It's going to be cutting into scissors again at about a maybe 45 degree angle. If you cut up too high like this, when you need to move the bread over, it's going to kind of create this little crease. So what you want to do is try to get an angle and you're basically going to take your thumb, go one direction, your finger, go the other direction. You're going to go back and forth and cut a piece. So it's just going to be like that, a little bit over. Just let it kind of rest and fall to the side. Okay. It's, it's not necessary to force it. It'll just come up like that. Basically what it's gonna do is give it just nice kind of a roll. And then instead of doing just three scores, on a rustic baguette, often what you'll end up doing is actually just having one long score. So all the way, end to end, just a little flap up. All right, so when we load this, again, you have to be careful what you're doing. Steam with some ice and a little bit of water. Okay. And you get a really nice result. Probably the bake on a home oven is about maybe 25 minutes, maybe 27, depending on your oven temperature. Uh, at a bakery, you're generally trying to get up around maybe 21 to 23 minutes. Uh, but this will take a little bit longer. So about 25 minutes or so, we'll check it out. All right, so rustic baguette. Uh, the final bake came out very nicely with, when you have the poulish, you have the levain, uh, a little touch of the whole wheat, uh, a little bit longer fermentation than you would uh, for a, you know, maybe a straight dough or and or just a traditional baguette with a poulish. You get a little more depth of color, a little bit uh, um, more depth of flavor as well. And it's gonna have a little bit uh, chewier uh, crumb Okay, it's still gonna have a thin, crisp crust, but it's gonna be a little bit chewier crumb. And overall, it's just, it's just a different approach to making a baguette. 
It's another way to think about fermentation. It's another way to think about how to create something in your mind that may be a little bit different. Uh, so try the ideas. Put, put different pre-ferments, different sours, different things together. Don't overcomplicate it. That's the main thing. Just make it a one, a two, you know, possibly situation. Maybe a third, but that's it. Uh, don't muddy it up. That's the idea. But wonderful baguettes, okay? Nice little demis that you can do in your home oven. Uh, I actually had more than this. My kids loved eating them, so I lost a few on the way. But uh, I think you'll do the same as you're making yours. Uh, the epi as well, very simple to do. You got a nice little roll that you can kind of just break off. And, and actually, a, a nice other thing to do with this, uh, sprinkle with a little water prior to baking and uh, sprinkle some sea salt on it, uh, or even, even like an herb or something. But sea salt matches so fantastically with it, and you break it off, and it's a nice little roll that you can add to a salad, something of that nature. Uh, so overall, very happy with it. Uh, follow the videos, look at the, the, the whole spectrum, because each one has been building on another concept. So if you watch the whole uh, series that we put together, I think this is number 13, you can follow it at Kingdom Bread uh, dash Tampa at the YouTube channel, and then as well uh, at our website, which is kingdombread-tampa.com, all right? So enjoy.